Hello students and welcome to another episode of English Extra Class Class 9th. Yesterday I taught you the part 1 of the sound of music that is about Evelyn Glennie. Today we will discuss about part 2 that is the Shehnai of Bismillah Khan. You can see a set of people over here and all are having some instrument or the other. Do you know these people? And what instruments are they playing? All are musicians and instrumentalists. So search for them and find out more about them. But if you see the last photo, he is nobody than the Shehnai player Bismillah Khanji. Let me tell you a small summary about his background. He was a renowned Shehnai player. He is a legend as he played the Shehnai on the day India got independence, that is 15th August 1947, at the Red Fort. Since he played it on such an auspicious day, so he is considered to be a legend. So let's proceed with the chapter. We'll start with the, the first paragraph. Paragraph 1. Emperor Aurangzeb banned the playing of a musical instrument called Pungi in the residence for it had a shrill unpleasant sound. Pungi became the generic name for all the noisemakers. Few had thought that it would one day be revived. So we are talking about the Mughal dynasty, the Mughal empire and the most renowned emperor of this dynasty was Aurangzeb. So he decided to ban the music, musical instrument called Pungi as it gave a very shrill unpleasant sound. Shrill means a very horrible unpleasant sound. And Pungi became the generic name for the noisemakers. Generic means any instrument that is made by a reed like a flute. So since Pungi was considered to be in the family of flute, few had thought that it would one day be revived. A Baba of a professional musician who had access to the royal palace decided to improve the quality of the pungi. He chose a pipe with a natural hollow stem that was longer than the pungi and made seven holes on the body of the pipe. When he played closing and opening some of these holes, sound and melodious sounds were soft and melodious sounds were produced, which played the instrument before royalty and everybody was impressed. The instrument from the uh, which uh, the instrument which had sound from the pungi had to be given a new name. As the story goes, since it was the first in the Shah's chamber and was played by a Nai Baba, the instrument was named as Shehnai. Underline the word revived, it means brought back to life. There was a barber who had an access to the royal palace. So he decided to improve the quality of the pungi. So he took a pipe and made many holes on it. And he played by closing and opening some of these holes. It was noticed that it produced soft and melodious sounds. And the king, the emperor was highly impressed. So the instrument from that day, it was called Shehnai because S-H-A-H, -H, Shehz means the emperor and Nai means the barber. So both the words combined, it produced the name, it created the name as Shehnai. So a very important question of this chapter, the how does Shehnai get, got its name? So the Shehnai got its name since it was discovered by a Nai in the Shah's court, in the Shah's chamber. So it got the name as Shehnai. Second paragraph. 
the sound of the shehnai began to be considered auspicious and for this reason it is still played in temples as in an indispensable component of any north indian wedding in the past the shehnai was part of the nawabat or traditional ensemble of nine instruments found at royal courts till recently it was used only in temples and weddings the credit for bringing the instrument onto the classical stage goes to ustad bismillah khan the sound of shehnai is also always considered to be very auspicious very religious and that's the reason shehnai is played in temples and in any north indian wedding earlier it was also played in the royal courts but till recently it is played in temples and weddings but to the classical stage this shehnai was brought by ustad bismillah khan ji next paragraph as a 5 year old Bismillah Khan played gilli danda near a pond in the ancient estate of Dumrao in Bihar. He would regularly go to the nearby Bihari Jeev temple to sing the Bhojpuri Chaita at the end of which he would earn a big laddu weighing 1.25 kg a prize given by the local maharaja. This happened 80 years ago and the little boy has traveled far to earn the highest civilian award in India the Bharat Ratna. So when Bismillah Khan was hardly of 5 years old he had the habit of playing gilli danda and i believe you also love to play gilli danda He was born in Dumrao in Bihar and regularly used to go to the nearby Bihari ji temple to sing the Bhojpuri Chaita song and after he completed his song he was given a big laddu which weighed 1.25 kg it was a prize given by the local maharaja now this incident occurred 80 years more than 80 years ago and after that bismillah khan traveled far and near to many places and he earned the high, highest civilian award in india that is the bharat ratna next paragraph Born on 21st March 1916, Bismillah belongs to a well-known family of musicians from Bihar. His father, sorry, his grandfather Rasulul ha- Rasul Baks Khan was the Shehnai Nawaz of the Bhojpur King's Court. His father Peygamber Baks and other per- paternal ancestors were also great Shehnai players. So here is the life history, the family background of Bismillah Khan. He was born on 21st March 1916. He belonged to the family of musicians of Bihar, of belonging from Bihar. His grandfather was Rasul Baks Khan. He was also a Shehnai player. His father was Paigambar Baks and he was also a great Shehnai player. So you can very well make out that he has come he has come from the background of Shehnai players. Next paragraph the young boy took to music early in life at the age of 3 when his mother took him to his maternal uncle's house in Benares now Varanasi Bismillah was fascinated watching his uncle's practice the shehnai soon bismillah started accompanying his uncle Ali Box to the Vishnu temple of Benares where Box was employed to play the shehnai so over here when he was very young he learned music so at the age of 3 his mother took him to the maternal uncle's house in benares and now benares is known as varanasi and hearing him play his uncle play the shehnai bismillah khan ji was highly fascinated to hear him playing it so bismillah khan started accompanying him his uncle ali box to the Vishnu temple of Benares where Box was employed to play the shehnai Ali Box would play the shehnai and Bismillah would sit captivated for hours on end he started getting lessons in playing the instrument and would sit practicing throughout the day 
for years to come the temple of balaji and mangalamaya and the banks of ganga became the young apprentice favorite haunts where he would practice in solitary the flowing waters of the ganga inspired him to improvise and invent ragas that was earlier considered to be beyond the range of the shehnai first of all write down the meanings of few words apprentice means trainer salute means to be alone horns means which attracts so when ali bugs played the shehnai bismillah khan would sit speechless captivated for hours and listen to him him and the way he was playing the shehnai after that he would just used to sit practicing throughout the day later on he used to go to the balaji and mangala and mangala maya and sit on the banks of river ganga now let me tell you the banks of river ganga really fascinated bismillah khan ji and he became the young apprentice apprentice means trainer and this place this particular place that is the bank of the river ganga became the favorite spot of bismillah khan ji where he used to sit throughout the day practicing the shehnai rather this water of river ganga inspired him to improvise and invent new ragas improvise means to invent and to find out new ragas and to study and to focus more on ragas which was considered to be beyond the range of shehnai people thought that nobody can improvise on ragas but bismillah khan ji did all impossible things possible next paragraph at the age of 14 bismillah accompanied his uncle to the alabad music conference at the end of his recital ustad fayyas khan patted the young boy's back and said said work hard and you shall make it with the opening of the all india radio in lucknow came bismillah khan's big break he soon became an open heard shehnai player on radio so it was hard, he was hardly of 14 years of age and bismillah khan ji went along with his uncle to the allahabad music conference and at the end of his recital another great ustad another great musician ustad fayyas khan patted him and said work more hard and definitely you will get success in life you shall make it means you will get success in life at that time the all in the radio was opened in lucknow and over here bismillah khan ji got his first break in the all in the radio and soon he became an often heard means people started hearing him on the radio quite often next paragraph when india gained independence on 15th august 1947 bismillah khan became the first indian to greet the nation with his shehnai he poured his heart out into raga kafi from the red fort to an audience which included mahatma gandhi and pandit jawaharlal nehru who later gave his famous tourist with destiny speech so that auspicious day has ultimately come it was the 15th august 1947 Bismillah Khan became the first Indian to greet the nation with his shehnai. He was the first person to play his shehnai in such a huge crowd. He poured his heart out into raga rag kafi. So he played rag kafi. Kafi is the name of a rag, a raga from the red fort. And in that audience, Mahatma Gandhi, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, all were present. But his performance was first and later on pandit jawaharlal nehru gave his famous speech the tyrant with destiny in front of the audience so the first performer was bismillah khan and the second performer was jawaharlal nehru pandit jawaharlal nehru
Next paragraph. Bismillah Khan has given many memorable performances both in India and abroad. His first up a trip abroad was to Afghanistan where King Zahir Shah was so taken by taken in by by this maestro that he gifted him priceless Persian carpets and other souvenirs. Afghanistan was not the only one to be fascinated with Bismillah Khan's music. So over here, Bismillah Khan ji has given many uh, memorable performances, very good performances, both in India and abroad. When he made his first trip to Afghanistan, over there, King Zahir Shah, who was a king at that time, was so spellbound by his performance, by this maestro, by this great personality, that he gifted him, that he gave him as a gift, a priceless Persian carpet and other souvenirs. Even the Afghanistan, even the people of Afghanistan was fascinated by this performance of Bismillah Khan. Next, the film director Vikram Bhatt was so impressed after hearing Bismillah play at a festival that he named a film after the instrument called Gunj Uti Shainai. The film was a hit and one of Bismillah Khan's composit uh, compositions, Dil Ka Khilona Hai Toot Gaya, turned out to be a nationwide chart buster. Despite this huge success in the celluloid world, Bismillah Khan's ventures in film music were limited to two. Vijay Bhatt's Gunjuti Shainai and Vikram Srinivas's Kannada venture Sanadhi Apanna. I just can't come to terms with the artificiality and glamour of the film world, he says with emphasis. So over here, he got an offer from the film director Vikram Bhatt who was so impressed by Bismillah Khan's uh, performance at a festival that he offered him a film, Goon Juti Shainai, is a very old, old film and a very renowned film. Maybe you have not seen it. If you get a chance, please see it. You can get to know more about the film from your parents. Now, during those days, the film was a huge hit, especially for the song Dil Ka Khilona Hai Toot Gaya. And Bismillah Khan composition was this song. It became a nationwide chart buster because it was tremendous hit all over India. After this great success, Bismillah Khan could have worked in many films, but he did only two films. Number one, Vijay Vaz Gunjuti Shahnai and Vikram number two, Vikram Srinivas Kannada Venture, Sanadi Apanna. He did not do any films after that. And the reason that he gave was, he hated the artificiality and the glamour of the film world. He didn't like the artificial world of movies and glamour. Next paragraph. Our awards and recognition came thick and fast. Bismillah Khan became the first Indian to be invited to perform at the prestigious Lincoln Center Hall in the United States of America. He also took part in the World Exposition in Montreal. Let me tell you, Montreal is a place in Australia, is in Australia, in, a, in the Keynes Art Festival and in the Osaka Trade Fair. Osaka is in Japan. So well known did he become internationally that an auditorium in Tehran was named after him, Tahar Moskikyu Ustad Bismillah Khan. Tehran is in Iran. So, he got many awards. Undoubtedly, he's, he played so well everywhere. He got name and fame all over the world. And he, as a result, he bagged many awards and recognition all over the world. Thick and fast means all over the world. And he became the first in Indian to be, to be invited to perform at the Lincoln Center Hall in the United States of America. He too also took part in the World Exposition in Montreal, in the Cane Arts Festival and in the Osaka Trade Fair. So from here you can very well make out that he is renowned every, as a great Shainai player all over the world. And he became so famous inter internationally that an auditorium was made for in his honor in Tehran, which was named after him, which is called Tahar Mosikyu Ustad Bismillah Khan.
Next paragraph. National awards like Padma Shri, the Padma Bhushan, and the Padma Vibhushan were conferred on him. So earlier you have heard that he was the the he got the award called Bharat Ratna. Beside these, he got three other awards. That is Padma Shri, the Padma Bhushan, and the Padma Vibhushan. Next paragraph. In 2001, Ustad Bismillah Khan was awarded India's highest civilian award, the Bharat Ratna. With the coveted and resting on his chest and his eyes glinting with rare happiness, he said, underline the word glinting, it means shining. All I would like to say is, teach your children music. This is Hindustan's richest tradition. Even the West is now coming to learn our music. So, we have already heard about his, uh, he got the Bharat Ratna and with shining eyes, he told to the public, he told to the audience, he told to the world, told to the Indians that teach your children music. For according to him, music is Hindustan's richest tradition. Even the Western culture, the Western people is now coming to India to learn music. So it is a really, very really proud moment for the Indians that they are able to teach in uh, music to the Western countries also. Next paragraph. In spite of having traveled all over the world, Khan Saab, as is fondly called, is exceedingly fond of Benares and Dumrao and they remain for him the most wonderful towns of the world. A student of his once wanted him to head a Shainai school in USA. And the student promised to recreate the atmosphere of Benares by replicating the temples there. But Khan Saab asked him he would, if he would be able to transport river Ganga as well. Later he is remembered to have said, that is why whenever I am in the foreign country, I keep yearning to see Hindustan. While in Mumbai, I think of only Benares and the holy Ganga. And while in Benares, I miss the unique Mata of Dimrao. So he was popularly known as Khan Saab. And uh, he remembers two things, that is Benares and Dimrao. Benares where he, uh, I repeat, Benares where he learnt music and Dimrao where he was born. Underline the word replicating meaning a copy of something. So once a student of uh, Bismillah Khan offered him, rather told him to open our Shainai school in USA. And he even promised to uh, recreate the atmosphere of Benares over there. But Khan Saab asked him one thing that, okay, he is ready to go, to, go over there. But he asked a student that is he able to transport River Ganga also in USA? If we can do it, he will also go to USA. Otherwise, no. So it's a very nice way of telling uh, or rather giving a negative answer to his student. And a very uh, nice way he has presented his answer. But he is deeply rooted. He was attached to his roots. And his two roots are Benares and Dumra. That means this shows that he was a true Indian. He said that whenever he is in Benares, he thinks about Dumrao. And whenever he is in Dumrao, he thinks about Benares. So he yearns for both the places. He misses both the places at the same time. Neither he can uh, leave India as he is deeply attached to river Ganga. So you can see river Ganga, Benares and Dumrao, all the three places are a part and parcel of Bismillah Khanji's life. He cannot live without all these three places. Paragraph number 13, but before I go to paragraph number 13, you can read silently the above paragraph about Bismillah Khan and Shekhar Gupta, who was a journalist. Paragraph 13. Ustad Bismillah Khan's life is a perfect example of the rich cultural heritage of India. 
One that effortlessly accepts that a devout Muslim like him can very naturally play the Shehnai every morning at the Kashi Vishwanath temple. So you can see, in spite of being a Muslim, Ustad Bismillah Khan ji goes every day in the morning to Kashi Vishwanath temple and plays the Shehnai over there. Now we come to the end of this chapter. Ustad Bismillah Khan passed away on 21st August 2006 at the age of 90 after a prolonged illness. He was given a state funeral and the government of India declared one day of national mourning. So he died away, he passed away on 21st August 2006 when he was uh, of the age of 90. And uh, definitely he was uh, very ill for a long time, prolonged time for a long time. But the entire nation salute. Uh, honored him by keeping the uh, one day as a national holiday and the entire country was grieving on the death of a legendary music. I hope you have all understood it. Tomorrow I will start with another chapter. Make sure that you are doing the question answers properly in the English literature notebook. Thank you.